A blue monster appears, leaving destruction in its wake. Saitama, a bald man wearing a cape, decides to deal with the situation. He saves a young girl from the monster calling itself Vaccine Man, who claims to have a better backstory than simply being a hero for fun. But before he can finish his villain exposition, Baldi defeats him with a single punch, screaming in frustration. Only one punch? Again? A less bald and more unemployed Saitama runs into a half-crab man named Crablante, but he leaves him alone as a little boy with an impressive cleft chin drew nipples on his carapace and apparently needs to pay for it. He decides to save the kid, killing Crablante with a necktie, ripping out his eye stalk. After that, he trained so hard he went bald. That was three years ago. Present-day Saitama remembers a colossal man interrupting his shopping trip. Apparently, a mad scientist created a serum to make this meathead brother the strongest man alive. Saitama appears on the left shoulder, while the brains maniacally denotes how they'll rule the world, until he notices and tells his brother to kill the man on his shoulder. No, the other one! It dawns on the bronze, and he tries removing Saitama from his sight sending him deep underground. Being the strongest man alive makes you feel empty. Saitama agrees. Having too much power is boring. Accidentally leveling B-City with one right hook, sending the giant flying. Saitama notices there's less need for emotions when you can solve everything with a single punch. Waking up, there's a subterranean invasion. The Earth Dwellers have taken the lives of 70% of the population. Saitama is elated. Finally, some opponents that can rekindle his fighting spirit. They even have a king. And he wakes up to find there really is an invasion, but nothing like the one he envisioned. There's a massive swarm of mosquitoes in City Z, while Saitama struggles to catch even one while watering his cactus. The blood is completely drained from a looter in the abandoned city. A cyborg figures out they're being controlled by a mosquito woman who trades her legs for an arm. Saitama runs down the street spraying the single mosquito, only to run into the cyborg and the giant swarm surrounding the woman. Despite setting the bugs alight, the massive amount of blood she consumes forces the cyborg to self-reflect after Saitama swats her, disappearing faster than his clothes. In awe of his strength, the cyborg wishes to become his disciple. And he's not joking, he shows up a week later, introducing himself as Janos, insistent on calling Saitama master and relaying his whole life story completely unprovoked. Basically, a cyborg destroyed his hometown along with its inhabitants, forcing Janos to become a cyborg to take revenge on said cyborg. A mysterious figure decides to capture Saitama for his genetic experiments, sending genetically modified creatures after him. Janos learns from an armored gorilla, who's also a cyborg, about the House of Evolution, a cloning lab run by clones. He launches into a monologue about Dr. Genus, who experiments with artificial evolution and who's taken an interest in Saitama's incredible strength. Upon arrival at the House of Evolution, Janos levels the entire above-ground complex. One of the clones unleashes Carnage Kabuto, the pinnacle of evolution, according to the doctor. He deals with Janos effortlessly, though when he goes to attack Saitama, he backs off. Terrified of his power and lack of thought given to defense, he's wide open. Before they fight, Saitama reveals the secret to his strength. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run every day for three years, or at least until your hair falls out. That's just regular strength training. That can't be his secret. Unfortunately for everyone in the room, that's pretty much the gist of it. Carnage Kabuto goes into carnage mode. He'll be in this rampaging state for a week, all the way to next Saturday. Saitama looks defeated. He isn't even putting up a fight. A whole week, which means today is Saturday. He's made a grave mistake. He missed discount day at the supermarket, absolutely destroying his wallet and Carnage Kabuto. But Janos reassures him that there's still enough time to make it before close. They blast a hole through the wall and rush to the store. 
Dr. Genus gives up on his research right then and there. While the Hero Association investigates Genos' destructive capabilities, after a passionate speech about eating the banks or trickle-down bootstraps, a terrorist named Hammerhead knocks down a building owned by Zenidu, a wealthy, powerful man. Eh, uh, wrong building, but it's the thought that counts, right? Saitama jolts awake after a disturbing dream about rock-paper-scissors, discovering there's a group of terrorists running rampant. He won't stand for it. They stole his look. Now every bald man is a public enemy. Zenidu doesn't need to look far for help. He hires an assassin, who shows up at an almost too convenient time to deal with Hammerhead and Co. He makes quick work of the cue balls, relieving their bodies of their heads. But Hammerhead slips away, only to run into Saitama in the forest, who destroys his stolen battle suit. The assassin shows up and immediately thinks he's a terrorist. Saitama is disheartened that he has no idea who he is. The hired gun zips around, introducing himself as Speed of Sound Sonic. The only thing that slows him down is saying his own name. He's surprised that Saitama can block his attacks when he accidentally sacks him. Sonic vows that they'll meet again while slinking off. Saitama tells Genos they have a problem. Nobody knows who he is, despite defeating more monsters than any other hero. Apparently, if he wants recognition, he'll have to sign up to be on the official hero registry. They agree to sign up together, so Genos can become his official disciple. There are only two things standing in their way, a physical and written exam. Saitama destroys every record of the physical portion, and most of the equipment while he's at it. Genos gets a perfect score on both portions, but why would they make a cyborg take the physical? He is immediately ranked as an S-Class hero, and confident in his master, begins celebrating, only to find out he mistook the top half of the letter C as that of an S. Saitama passed by one point despite a perfect physical score. They are the only two that pass the hero exams, and must endure a class taught by Snack, an A-Class hero. Frustrated at their lack of attention span, Snack tries to haze Saitama later on, only to embarrass himself further. Genos challenges Saitama to spar, though upon asking his master to go all out, he's completely baffled by his incredible strength. He still doesn't believe that Saitama's basic training regimen is truly his secret. He's on another level completely. Afterwards, they get some udon, when Class A Rank 1 hero Sweet Mask comes to speak with Genos. Outside, he gives him an ominous welcome to the big leagues. It's been five days since they became heroes and Genos moved in. He casually mentions that Class C heroes need to make a quota or else they are removed from the registry. Saitama had no idea, nor did he have the slightest clue what he could teach his disciple. He quickly makes something up he read in a manga about training his mind or something, and gives him the goal of making S-Class Top 10. He runs around the city for two days to no avail. To make matters worse, Sonic shows up, looking for a rematch against his imaginary rival, becoming spooked when Saitama breaks his sword and threatens him in anger. A woman points them out as another C-Class hero, Tank Top Tiger, approaches. Saitama laughs, thinking Sonic is a criminal, but becomes even more annoyed when he realizes nobody recognizes him as a hero. Sonic throws an exploding shuriken at Tank Top Tiger and starts wreaking havoc. Saitama doesn't have time for this. He needs to find a villain. Wait, does bringing Sonic in count towards his quota? It's a good thing he happens to be a hired assassin, despite Saitama's ignorance of the fact. Two A-Class heroes, Golden Ball and Spring Mustachio, are dispatched to City Z to investigate reports of a monster sighting. A monster also investigates the sighting and ends up running into the heroes. Golden Ball is taken out almost immediately, while Spring Mustachio calls for backup before getting destroyed. Saitama happens to be walking home and runs into the monster. Not good. He forgot to get kombu stock. A giant meteor changes trajectory, now heading straight for City Z, when Genos is called in by the association. All the S-Class heroes are called in, but only Bang shows up. He briefs Genos on the situation. Before he can try his new upgrades, Metal Knight sends one of his drones for a field test, which has no impact whatsoever. Janos begins overthinking, 
until Bang calms him down. He puts everything he has into one shot, which again, has no impact on the meteorite. Saitama appears, refusing to let his city be destroyed, and punches straight through, shattering the meteorite into smaller pieces that rain down on the city causing massive devastation. No one died though, good enough. After the events, Saitama's rank shoots up from 342 to C-Class Rank 5, despite doing what two S-Class heroes couldn't. He goes out on patrol, only to be stopped by Tank Top What's-His-Face and another Tank Top wearing hero, who tried to turn the citizens against Saitama for destroying the city and cheating in the rankings. Saitama becomes angry and yells at the crowd, who are oblivious to the fact that they wouldn't be standing there without him. He doesn't do this for admiration, he does it because he wants to. Genos calms him down before he makes a bigger scene. The Sea Folk announce their invasion of the surface. Moomin Rider races to the scene, but he's too late. Saitama happened to be walking by and already took care of it. In City J, A-Class hero Stinger defeats some of the Sea Folk who begin to emerge, while Saitama watches reports of the incident. The Sea King appears, defeating Stinger with ease as Janos, Saitama, and Moomin Rider head to the scene. Lightning Max debates whether to step in when the Sea King appears behind him, taking him out in a single hit. Two escaped convicts, Puri Puri Prisoner, an S-Class hero, and Sonic run into the Sea King, who has a tough time dealing with the former. Sonic decides to take him on after being insulted, but as it begins to rain, the Sea King only gets faster and stronger. Momin Rider spots a lost Saitama looking for Genos and gives him a ride. Sonic escapes with his life, but not his clothes, and tells the cyborg not to bother, running past Saitama during his retreat. Saitama jumps off the bike, wondering who the naked guy was. He finds Momin Rider's dropped phone when the Hero Association calls. Janos faces off with the Sea King, who rips his arm off while he tries to evacuate the stadium, but he's taken out while attempting to save a little girl. Not to worry, Momin Rider is on the scene. He absolutely refuses to give up, giving a rousing speech and garnering cheers from the crowd. Saitama catches him before the Sea King kills him, interrupting his villain exposition. Cue Ball winds up and completely wrecks the King of the Deep with one punch, stopping both him and the rain. Sonic, now clothed, returns with his weapons a few seconds too late, believing the monster left. At their apartment, Genos and Saitama receive a bunch of fan mail, well, hate mail, and one fan letter in Saitama's case, prompting a flashback to the aftermath of the battle, where Saitama vindicates one crowd member's smack-talking heroes. He lies to them, saying it's true that he's the guy who steps in to steal other heroes' credit, making them appreciate the fallen ones. A third letter arrived from the Hero Association, promoting him to C-Class Rank 1 and inviting him to a meeting to decide whether to move up to B-Class. They discuss if he's really a fake despite his record-breaking test scores. If he's for real, they'll soon find out. On his way back home, he stops for something to eat, only to find Moomin Rider, who offers to buy him a drink since he couldn't say everything in his thank you letter. At Bang's dojo, he tells Genos and Saitama that one of his students went crazy and defeated all his top disciples when someone from the Hero Association shows up, claiming there's an emergency meeting for all S-Class heroes. Saitama goes along, since he has nothing better to do. Madam Shibabawa, a seer who predicted monster attacks, has died. But with her last breath, she predicted that the Earth is in trouble, sometime within the next six months. Suddenly, the HQ is attacked. A giant alien spaceship appears in the sky, leveling City A. Genos looks around, but Saitama has already busted through the ceiling, boarding the ship with ease, leaving the S-Class heroes to fight on the ground. One of the aliens, Gudiugunshup, panics while Saitama thoughtlessly runs through the ship, punching everything in his path. They call Melzargard, the regenerating multi-headed alien fighting the S-Class heroes on the ground, back to the ship to help. Meanwhile, Saitama continues searching for the captain, accidentally breaking everything he touches. 
The heroes fighting the alien have a tough time, as physical attacks have no effect, until Metal Bat finds and destroys a blue marble which kills off one of the heads. When Saitama is contacted telepathically and told to leave, claiming he's lost, the alien is more than happy to direct him off the ship, until he goes in the opposite direction. Smashing through the door, he finds the telepath who tries to intimidate him with telekinesis. But Saitama says it's a waste of time using such power to throw pebbles around, tossing one right through its head. The ship's gunner waits for confirmation, but decides to fire regardless. But the S-Class hero Tornado stops the barrage, redirecting it towards the ship. Moomin Rider saves the survivors in City A, inspiring other low-ranking heroes to join him. Bang destroys another of Melzargard's heads, which leaves only one left, provoking an attack that launches him through multiple buildings. Back on the ship, Saitama smashes through the alien leader's door, who recognizes him as the strongest warrior on the planet, with seemingly unlimited energy. Before they fight, he wishes to exchange names out of respect, announcing himself as Boros, the leader of the Dark Matter Gang and dominator of the universe. Saitama begins introducing himself as a hero for fun, a uh, make that a professional hero, catching himself, saving him from embarrassment. Apparently, when Boros became bored with being so strong, an alien seer made a prediction that he would find someone worthy of fighting. Saitama doesn't care, punching him, only to break his armor, which seals his unimaginable power. Sure, okay. He has no problem keeping up, even punching Boros' arm off. Tornado begins attacking the ship with her telekinesis, while Drive Knight warns Genos that Metal Knight is not an ally. Bang turns out to be completely fine and destroys the last of Melzargard's heads. Boros continues his relentless assault on Saitama, who is still completely unfazed by everything he says and does. He does, however, have powerful regenerative powers, but Saitama interrupts his villain exposition, but takes a high knee, sending him to the moon. He looks around and jumps back to Earth, impressing himself. It's time to end this. Saitama finally unleashes one of his most powerful moves, consecutive normal punches, but it only provokes Boros to use his ultimate move, forcing Saitama to use his ultimate move serious punch, which sends him around the world, completely baffling Boros that he lost. Sweet Mask shows up, becoming furious about the results of the battle, and loses it on the S-rank heroes, while Metal Knight sends a drone to collect the alien tech to incorporate into his own. Genos wonders where his master is, as Saitama punches his way out of the ship. They ignore a furious tornado and start casually chatting about him beating Boros. Even though City A was wiped off the map, they rebuilt the Hero Association with parts salvaged from the ship while inviting the A and S rank heroes to live at the new headquarters. A while later, Saitama faces Pluton, king of the underworld, only to become furious that he's back to beating everything with one punch. After a successful mission at the supermarket, Saitama and Genos run into King, S-Class Rank 7, going about his day. A monster, Tongue Stretcher, can't camouflage his undesirable behavior, that is, until he's face to face with King. Afraid of getting the licking of his lifetime, he surrenders immediately to the strongest human alive when the sound of the King engine rattles his reptile brain. Relieved to avoid conflict, King tries to continue on with his day when he's confronted by G4, a robot bent on taking the throne. But King turns his attention to one of porcelain. G4 caves, giving him a 10-minute bathroom break before he attacks innocent civilians. King starts freaking out, almost scaring the otaku out of him. He's a fraud. Every time a monster shows up, someone else takes care of it, and everyone gives him credit. He decides to make a break for it to play his new video game while Genos battles the bot. When he finally gets home and boots up Heartbeat Haughty Sisters 2, Saitama suddenly starts inquiring about his behavior, having followed King home. 
Embarrassed, King claims that he accidentally bought the wrong game. Totally isn't a hardcore dating sim fan, obviously. The two start gaming, despite King's reluctance. Suddenly, a giant bird destroys the outer wall of King's apartment. When Saitama wonders if he should take care of it, King's secret is finally exposed. Looks like he'll be eating crow for dinner. After Saitama defeats the hollow-boned horror, to his chagrin, King realizes it's been him. No hair, all skin, the smooth-headed caper, his savior. All the way back to his octopus encounter, which left an ocular scar, he's been there. Albeit, the failure of his follicles made recognizing his dome a hairy endeavor. The Hero Association is desperate, even going so far as to recruit criminals. Sonic leaves the meeting after discovering Saitama is absent. The criminals and heroes are at odds, and neither side is enthusiastic about the proposition. Garo challenges everybody, declaring humans the enemy. He's fighting for the monsters. He deals with most of the attendees, leaving Sitch alive to send a message announcing the arrival of Garo, the monster. Saitama is distracted, playing games, when Genos detects someone coming right for them. Answering the door, he's met with Sonic, looking to pick another fight with his rival. He'll have to slow his roll. Revenge isn't in the cards today. As he and Genos decide to take their battle elsewhere, Hellish Blizzard, B-Class, Rank 1, shows up at their apartment. She tries to explain the factions found within each class. Blizzard, being the leader of the Blizzard group, tries to strong-arm Saitama, only to get a taste of his. Their fight leads them to the street, where they run into Genos and Sonic. Saitama saves Blizzard, much to her surprise. Genos decides to obliterate Sonic in a giant blast to circumvent his afterimage trick. But Saitama stops him. He'd rather have somewhere to lay his smooth head at night than have his disciple destroy his neighborhood. Instead, he gives in to Sonic's desire to fight him. It's time to use serious sideways jumps. Creating more afterimages than Sonic, moving faster than Blizzard can even see, Saitama defeats Sonic with his own technique. Back at the apartment, Blizzard complains that she's been blotted out by the storm clouds, living in her sister's terrible tornado's shadow. She laments some more about never being able to rise in the ranks, when there's a knock on the door. It's King, looking for his handheld console, only to find out that Saitama saved over his file. Blizzard continues to be surprised. Janos receives the hero name Demon Cyborg, while Saitama is bequeathed a title that strikes fear into the unshaved and capeless, henceforth known as Caped Baldy. At Bang's dojo, he expels Chidanko for not standing up after receiving a substantial beatdown. Chidanko later relays this to Saitama and company at his apartment. Genos inquires further about any link between Bang's change in demeanor and Garo's recent rampage. Perhaps it was to keep Chidanko safe. After leaving the apartment, Chiranko walks aimlessly, imagining what he would do if he ran into Garo. Well, he won't have to imagine much longer. He hears Garo close by with Moomin Rider. Before the two have spoken, a gang of tank-top-wielding Hebrews shows up to challenge the self-proclaimed monster. After an initial assault, the heroes are taken aback at Garo's ability to stand. Meanwhile, Bang welcomes his brother, Bomb, to the dojo. They discuss how powerful the ex-disciple has become and their plans to stop him together. Tank Top Master is compelled to end Garo, sensing something not quite right about him. But before he can land the finishing blow, Moomin Rider throws himself between them. He can't believe a hero would kill a human. The muscle for brains agrees, despite some bro tests from his entourage, and tells Garo to leave. There's no way he'd leave now, though. Accidentally using Bang's technique, he decimates the gym junkies, even putting Momin Rider in the hospital, where Saitama visits him the next day, trying to glean some information. At a park, a kid flips through a hero almanac when Garo joins him, gaining info on the heroes from the various entries. Saitama meets with Chiranko in the hospital to learn about martial arts. There's a tournament soon, and since Chiranko can't participate, he gives Saitama his extra tickets. Using the book to locate Golden Ball, Garo challenges him to a fight, which the tipsy hero accepts, catching the wannabe monster off guard at first, 
though quickly running out of balls. Luckily, Spring Mustachio comes to his aid, but that luck is short-lived, as Gyro finishes him off too. While walking in the shopping district, Gyro accidentally runs into Saitama shopping. Thinking he's a low-level hero, he tries to attack the clueless cue ball, shocking the disgraced disciple when he effortlessly counters and renders him unconscious. Turns out, Saitama was looking for a wig to disguise himself as Chiranko in the tournament. Gyro has a flashback to his childhood, rooting for the monsters, since he doesn't understand why the bad guys always lose. Not wanting to accept the regular order of things, he resolves to never lose, becoming the strongest monster. He wakes up confused as to how he got knocked out. After an attack on a Hero Association's high-ranking official, Metal Bat is assigned to protect one of the biggest sponsors, along with his kid. Chiranko worries that Saitama might enter the Super Fight Tournament under his name, which is a valid concern, seeing as that's exactly what Saitama does. Another former disciple of Bang, Sourface, confronts the undercover One Punch Wonder. He goes on to explain how a contestant, Wolfman, won last year's tournament wearing a mask, only for them to find the real Wolfman after the fact, causing the tournament to ban any headwear, causing Saitama to wig out. Meanwhile, the sponsor and his kid are attacked by monsters. Metal Bat defends them without any trouble. That is, until a dragon-level threat sent to Chodo appears. Two low-ranking heroes grab the two civilians and book it, leaving the slugger alone when Garo shows up. Ignoring his challenge at first, Metal Bat decides to play ball. Garo can't believe how much of a beating the baseball hero can endure. After knocking him down, Garo admits he almost got him. One head-on strike could have. A little girl's voice rings out, stopping his bat inches from Garo's face. The hero's little sister steps in and stops the fight. Surprisingly, Garo withdraws, while monsters watch from a distance. After the fight, they approach him and try to recruit him to the Monster Association, to which he refuses, offing one of his stalkers. The Hero Association is overwhelmed as monsters appear in large numbers in every city. At the tournament, Saitama learns that the pairings are based on apparent strength. While Zakos tries to talk trash, Saitama points out how weak he must be since their first match is against each other. Well, it isn't really a match. Saitama wins with the single slap. A former champion, Sweetieu, who returned after disappearing for seven years, takes care of Lightning Max with a single kick in his first match. With reports of monsters in the area, Genos leaves the stands to take care of it. Sourface boasts about winning as Saitama returns from the bathroom, having missed the entire thing. Saitama's next opponent begins to taunt the rookie, attempting to intimidate him until he touches his wig, garnering a single-punch knockout. Meanwhile, more monsters appear while the heroes become stretched thin trying to combat the large-scale assault. Genos barely beats an elusive cockroach man, only to get blindsided by a dragon-level threat. At the tournament, Sweetieu taunts Snack, dissing heroes, claiming that only the strong will survive before winning yet another match with a single blow. S-Class heroes join the foray against the monster assault in an attempt to turn the tide, while Saitama faces off against a ruthless psychopath, more like a toothless handicap after a single smack. During the chaos, Atomic Samurai meets with the Council of Swordmasters regarding the Gyro problem. Instead of devising a plot to combat the monsters, Hadagiri has joined them, trying to entice the others with monster cells claiming that consuming them will give them incredible power. Though nothing nuclear, the Atomic Samurai splits him in two. It's finally time for the finals, Saitama vs. Suidiu. The latter promises to show his opponent what martial arts are really about. He continues to show his disdain for heroes and advises against becoming one. Saitama finally has enough not even bothering to dodge a kick which sends his wig flying, disqualifying him for wearing a head cover. Sweetieu becomes furious. Refusing to lose, he lets out a fury of blows proclaiming to show what martial arts can do, only to receive Saitama's one-hit wonder, sending him flying out of the ring. Despite winning, 
Sweetie isn't satisfied. What would have happened if Saitama hadn't pulled his punch? Suddenly, three giant crows descend from above. As Goketsu catches a contestant trying to escape and throws their mangled corpse in front of the others. Announcing himself, the contestants are shocked to discover the previous champion has become a monster. He offers the contestants monster cells. The only alternative, death. Most decide to eat the cells, but Sweetie refuses, deciding to battle the newly created monsters. Elsewhere, Gyro finds Watchdog Man and they start to fight. The latter wonders whether he's human or a monster. Sweetie begs for help from the last competitor. Instead, he realizes as a human, he'll never stand a chance. Eating the remaining monster cells, he collapses. Despite the insurmountable odds, Lightning Max and Snack appear, dressed in their hero gear, ready to help. Sweetie is baffled when they decide to stay and fight. When he turns heel to run, Bakuzan's transformation wasn't a failure after all. Sweetie asks to be spared, to no avail. His only option now, cry out for help and hope someone hears. A mysterious figure appears, smooth dome and flowing red cape. The caped baldy makes quick work of Bakuzan, unable to place him despite feeling as though they've met. Only after Sweetie reminds him does it click. No matter, he placed him dead last now. Saitama explains why he joined the tournament, though disappointed he barely learned anything. Hearing about Goketsu piques his interest though. Maybe an incredibly strong martial art practicing monster could, or not. No point in losing your head over it. Returning to Sweetie, Saitama asks him to keep quiet about the tournament, while Sweetie asks whether he could become a hero, to which Saitama responds nonchalantly, probably. He became a hero, so anyone could if they wanted. Saitama reflects on how bored he is. Being the strongest doesn't allow for many challenges. King gives him an inspirational speech about being the best hero or something. He read it in a manga. Still not stirring up any passion in the despondent hero, he offers to play games. He'll even give Saitama an advantage. Suddenly, Garo appears. Noticing King, he attempts to take out one of the top heroes, only to be swatted like a fly by Saitama again. Meanwhile, Sonic is confronted by two ninja associates who propose a method to beat his rival. All he needs to do is consume a monster cell. Back at home, he decides it best to cook it before consuming it, though only gains the power to evacuate his bowels at the speed of sound. At the Hero Association, a strange acting employee claims to have a message from the Monster Association. The possessed messenger transforms, claiming to desire a ceasefire, immediately attacking when the humans consider the offer. They are preparing for war. After Garo comes to, he sees Death Gatling, but decides to retreat and rest up before continuing his hero hunt. The kid with the almanac is sent by his friends to clear out the building they play in, only to stumble upon the wounded monster wannabe. Before he's able to leave, a couple of lower-ranking heroes surround the building. He takes one last look at the book and confronts the hunting party. Using the information available regarding their moves and equipment, he targets the one hero who isn't mentioned, keeping his distance. Garo tries to discount their hero ranks. Anything below S-Class is a joke. Death Gatling agrees. The ranking system is arbitrary though. It isn't really indicative of ability or skill. But if they finally take down the hero hunter, they'll gain much deserved recognition. Laughing, though stumbling from the poison-tipped arrows lodged in his shoulder. However, Garo remains defiant and defeats four of the eight heroes. Despite the poison blurring his vision, he continues to pick off the heroes one by one. Victorious, Garo stumbles away from the battlefield, only to be met with a newly repaired Genos. Meanwhile, Saitama and King battle it out on the screen when they receive notice of monster attacks. But King says there's no point, as someone will have dealt with it. Saitama agrees, Genos will be fine. He then has flashbacks to every time he's ruined his own body and decides to go check on things. Right as Genos provokes Gyro, admitting there are bigger problems than a small fry hero hunter and readies another attack, monsters appear out of the ground. They attempt to take Genos out while recruiting an enraged Gyro. Before Genos can cause himself any harm in a bid to take out the enemy, 
Bang and Bomb arrive, requesting to take over. Hearing Bang's voice gives Garo flashbacks to his youth at the dojo, only angering him further. Using Bang's own style against him is futile. His only chance is to use unexpected means to gain the upper hand. Using Watchdog Man's style confuses the heroes long enough to avoid taking even more damage. Phoenix Man continues to watch from above, waiting for his chance to grab Garo and escape, summoning Sentichoro, who emerges from below. Janos jumps into action, giving it everything he's got. It's not enough. Bang and Bomb combine their styles, attacking the monster's head, but the giant merely sheds its exoskeleton, barely taking any damage. Janos enters through its mouth, detonating a large explosion from within the creature's body, burning it from the inside out. But it's still not enough. Suddenly, they hear King's voice through a megaphone, claiming that the number one hero, Blast, is there to face off against Sentichero, having knowledge about the monster's grudge. The monster takes the bait, diving headfirst towards a defenseless king, waiting for Saitama to step in. At the last second, the bald wonder takes a crack at the enormous flying bug's face, absolutely obliterating the insect, like it was nothing. Genos asks his master what he still lacks, and thanks him vehemently when Saitama simply answers, power, worrying king. Nobody can live up to the caped baldy. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.